what we're looking for is what's called a clean CR, to your point, I think in the in introductory remarks, something that doesn't have a lot of the poison pills in it that we've seen in every single appropriations bill to date. Um, and so it, it looks like a relatively reasonable request. Your question about the laddering is something that does concern me to some degree, because I think it sets a precedent that we're going to sort of piecemeal parts of, of the appropriation or the budgetary process. This could splinter into a CR for every one of the different appropriations bills perceivably or uh, yeah. you know in in the future and that's really concerning because that basically derails what should be the regular process to begin with um and it becomes a constant cr um which is really concerning right i had a nightmare congresswoman i was watching cnn and there were 12 countdown clocks all staring at me at once but it turns out that's not actually what we're talking about in this that we we got details to, for the sake of our listeners and viewers you would see expirations uh, for agriculture, energy and water, military construction, VA and transportation HUD. Those are your four bills on the 19th of January. The eight remaining bills, uh, spending bills would uh, expire at the beginning of February. 32 page bill taken up by rules committee this afternoon. It looks like there will be a vote tomorrow. Congresswoman, is that what you're hearing? Because from from what we see here, the speaker will need Democrats to pass this. So I haven't yet heard. Are you saying that it did pass the rules committee? Because that would be news no, to me. Is that news? No, not at all. I understand that rules okay. will be taking it up this afternoon. But if it, it, are you hearing that it will be on the floor tomorrow and and, and that it sure. will require well, that, Democrats? That's, that's part of the magic, right? First and foremost, it has to pass rules. And then when it gets to the floor, it has to pass another request to pass the rule uh, on the floor for the whole body. And that requires that a majority of us say that we're ready to vote on this. So two things have to happen before we even have the possibility of voting on this CR together as a, as a, a whole body. And Congress is sort of a wild ride lately, and that's not always a given. In fact, we've seen rules go down um, at least once or twice that I can remember in the last six or seven months. So nothing is nothing is a given. Would you vote against it if it hit the floor? So I, I don't know yet is the answer to that. I, I feel as though it's uh, a relatively speaking earnest effort. I do worry about the precedent that it sets in terms of the splintering of, to your point, the 12 different or 14 different countdown clocks. I am frustrated that we're at this place and really frustrated that we don't seem to be able to get along with one another uh, across the aisle, but also within the Republican Party itself. And so it's just high high weirdness, as, as my father used to say, and high dysfunction right now. And I'm, I'm hoping we do the right thing for the American people as quickly as possible. High weirdness. Congresswoman, can I tell you how refreshing it is to hear that? I don't know. Is that not my favorite answer? Um, I, I, look, we all really appreciate your honesty because I know that this hasn't been fully baked. Uh, has the Democratic leadership, has Hakeem Jeffries weighed in on this, or is that the next step for you? No. Uh, to, to my knowledge right now, he has not weighed on it. They have not weighed in on it. Uh, I'll be interested to see what, what they say. Um, that being said, I think each one of us has to kind of make our own choices, you know, in this Congress. And uh, I think it remains to be seen what this particular effort will, will look like once it comes out of rules or once it goes through, you know, its initial votes or any of those other processes. And so I do have to say, I don't know. I think it's the appropriate answer right now. Um, but uh, mm -hmm. Congress has this pot, this uh, ability to sort of move at lightning speed or at glacial speed. And I hope that lightning speed, uh, effective lightning speed will be that choice this time. Well, let's say uh, we pass a CR by the grace of God, the government doesn't shut down. Then it's the matter of dealing with the supplemental budget request that came from the White House many weeks ago now, Congresswoman. You don't need me to tell you money for Israel, money for Ukraine. They were packaged with Taiwan and border security. The first thing the new speaker did was uh, strip apart uh, or bifurcate, to use his word, the funding for Israel. How many weeks can this go on for? Because this is clearly delaying things, whether it's the right way to go or not. How, how many yeah. weeks do we have before this becomes an urgent matter in both Israel and Ukraine? Not many is the answer to that question. You know, several is, I think, probably the best estimate. Um, and I agree that it is disappointing that the CR did not include any supplemental funding. And I very much believe that the supplemental funding should be all inclusive. All of the things that President Biden has asked for, Ukraine, uh, the border, um, 
making sure Israel is protected, a lot of the emergency funding as well. And I feel as though that's something that really is pressing right now. But to answer your question, my impression is within the next several weeks, we really need to move forward on that. Mm. And if you look at where the votes are, we have the votes on the House side, certainly somewhere on the order of 300 or so of us, I believe, would vote for that sort of a package. Um, what we don't have is necessarily it getting through rules and then getting it uh, for, for a final vote on the floor.